Yep, we're ready. Go ahead. All right, coach, we'll take an opening statement and then go to questions. Well, congratulations to Rutgers. Really tough team, good team. And uh, they got a lot of different ways they can beat you, in particular, you know, with our game uh, defensively. You know, I think, you know, as much as you worry about offense, you know, when you play those guys, you worry about being able to run offense and score. And uh, in the second half, we got bottled up pretty good. Made one good run in the second half, I thought, to get right back in the mix and control it. And then fatigue sort of set in, you know, right around that 12 minute mark, eight minute mark. And um, they keep coming at you. You know, they got great guard play. They're terrific off the dribble. And, um, you know, to me, their defense was really the key to the game again for the third time that we played them. I think uh, defensively, you know, we hung in pretty good. Uh, held them to 40% and 26% from three. Uh, they had some timely and big second shots. I thought Miles Johnson was tough on the glass. We got some switches that hurt us there. Uh, but all in all, defensively played hard, competed, uh, but wasn't able to sustain offense in the second half. A lot of that's due to them. And then, you know, you got to make some free throws. You got to make some layups. Uh, you have to make some open ones, you know, at this level, at this at this stage of the season, if you're going to have the chance to advance into that next round. Alec? Uh, yeah, Coach, you talked about Rutgers defense, obviously, in the kind of middle part of that second half. You guys were up 44-41 with that 12 minutes left in the game. What specifically did Rutgers do to, to hold you guys without a field goal for, for nine minutes uh, there in the second half? Oh, we got fatigued, you know, number one. Um, you know, but we didn't convert. You know, we, we didn't convert around the rim. They do a good job with their defense. Their one-on-one -on -one individual defense is good. Uh, but we weren't able to get any easy ones. You know, I think they made some runs offensively um, that put us against their press most of the second half. You know, had to bring it up. You have to, you know, work against their pressure. And then, you know, without the ability to really, you know, get some outside shooting, you know, at some point in the second half to go in, you know, it, it comes back down to playing in the paint. And it's tough against those guys. But uh, fatigue played a role about the 12-minute mark. You know, it was a long stretch there with the media. We had a media coming, I think, with 12.04 to go. And that media actually went all the way through back down to the eight minute mark and we got gas. They took advantage of that opportunity there, uh, but there weren't very many clean ones. And then the clean ones that we did get, we didn't convert, whether it was an easy layup, uh, baseline finish in and around the rim was tough. Um, and then the free throw line, obviously late in the game with a two possession game there, six to eight minutes to go. I think we go two for eight down that stretch or whatever it may have been you know, it was really a backbreaker. But, you know, all in all, we've had Rutgers three times this year. They've given us a lot of trouble. Uh, they're a good team, no, no question about it. But they do it on both ends. They got great quickness uh, on both ends of the floor. And, and tonight, you know, our defense was pretty good as well. We just, we just couldn't, uh, couldn't capitalize, you know, the last 10 minutes of the game being able to uh, score the ball. Kevin? Coach, what would be your message to fans that are concerned about the direction of the program at this point? The message to anybody right now is at the end of the day, we'll be fine. We've got good guys, guys who battled. And uh, like every program at this point in time, you have to take inventory. It's like I told our team, you know, expectations coming into this year, coming into this league, there was a lot of uncertainty about how things were going to work. We got our opportunities and um, we didn't cash in on them and performance matters. And our performance here this season, you know, as it was inconsistent and we, we weren't able to capitalize on opportunities all the way through from November to December to January to put ourselves in a comfortable position. You know, down here the stretch, you know, you deal with a tough injury or two and you're playing without Armand for a good three weeks. You know, that really hurt us down the stretch being able to maybe find a way to get one or two to alleviate some of the pressure down the run. But, um, you know, the reality is this is what it was. And we didn't take advantage of the opportunities, we weren't good enough. And um, now you have to take some inventory and you got to make sure that um, you're doing everything you can to, to progress and get better, which I know we will. Greg? Archie, um, two questions. The first one's really short. Did, did you hear the fans chanting your name and what they were saying? And if so, what'd you think about that? That's my first question. I didn't hear the fans say anything. And they were chanting my name. You know, that's up to them. But during the game, there's, there's not a whole lot you pay attention to. Okay. Second question is, um, 
this topic is going to dominate the off season until we get an answer. And the answer is, are you going to be back? I mean, that's, and, and the fans chanting fire, fire Archie is kind of a microcosm of that. Just, I don't I don't think you've ever entered an off season like this where you, are you entering it wondering if you'll be back or are you entering it knowing you will be back? I'm not entering any off season wondering, you know, if I'm going to be back. And, uh, those decisions are made way higher to me. My job is to run the program. We're doing our, our thing here. I talk to our administration daily. We're in a good spot. Didn't didn't capitalize on some opportunities this year to put ourselves in a position to, you know, be able to bounce back after last year's, you know, season was obviously canceled short. So it's disappointing, and uh, no one's more disappointed than our team and our program and our coaches. And um, that's what you worry about right now. You know, you got to build back up. You know, find a way, obviously, to get back up off the ground, put some things together here, and uh, prepare, obviously, you know, for hopefully a better off season. It's a very tough preseason, obviously, bringing in the team that we had, and you know, losing Joe at the, at the beginning of the season was a really, really tough blow to our depth. But all in all, we had our opportunities, and like I told those guys, performance matters, and uh, you know, the questions about me and whatnot—that's really not my concern. Alex. Archie, obviously the, the expectation is to make the NCAA tournament. I'm curious, you know, you, you said take inventory, but going forward, what do you think needs to change to, to be able to, to get to the tournament maybe on a consistent basis? You know, I think at the end of the day, there's got to be, you know, a breakthrough from, you know, your personnel, your team at some point has to be able to experience success. And, you uh, I think looking back on things, if last year's team was able to participate in the NCAA tournament, which we should have, that's a big that's a big roadblock to get out of the way. You know, that's a big block for your returners that experience that selection Sunday. They experience the opportunity to play in the game. You win a game. It really changes course for a lot of players, and that didn't happen. So we actually really just restarted this year with really no lead into the season as we jumped right back into the fire. And, you know, the fire was really, for us, a very, very difficult schedule from start to finish. Played as tough of a schedule as I've ever been a part of. And the league is as good as it has ever been. There's no room for error. And I think we just, uh, we don't have much room for error right now. And uh, this team didn't have as much room for error um, as maybe some other teams, you know, that we've had, especially last year's team with the depth. Uh, but we have to get more consistent offensive firepower. A lot of it has to do you know, in terms of being able to get more offensive weapons on the floor from the outside and shooting and do some things there. We've also got to develop our players and keep them getting better. You know, freshmen are freshmen, sophomores are sophomores. If you look at, you know, realistically, Trace and Armand moving from one year to the next, a great improvement. And uh, we need to keep that going as well. So, you know, without, without a lot of time to digest and make a thousand decisions here 15 minutes after the game, there's a lot that needs to go into it. And once we get those answers, we'll make those decisions and do our best to execute it. Mike. Coach, you talked a little bit about lack of confidence recently. Is that what happened when Mokay hits those two threes, but you know, eight, seven, eight minutes to go and, and you're not able to respond at all. Is that feeding off what happened those last five or six games of the season? No, I don't think so. I don't think that played a role. Um, I give them credit. I thought we they really took advantage of us during that stretch defensively where we didn't execute high on the floor against the ball screen, which we did pretty pretty good all night long. And uh, give them credit, they really attacked downhill, made some great passes, kid makes two good shots. But, you know, we made a run early in the game, they bounced back. We made a run in the second half, they bounced back. You know, you got five or six minutes to go, you gotta be ready to deal with, you know, what comes your way. And I think those last five or six minutes are guys, timeouts, huddles, you know, they believed they were in, we were in good shape. And we continue to get some stops. We just we didn't have it offensively here down the stretch. And in particular, that's probably been our biggest problem here in the last three weeks. Just you look at the three point shooting in general, you're not going to win very many games when you shoot the percentage we've shot over the last three or four games. Tom. Archie, you had to mention often during the course of this year of, of, of inconsistencies over the course of 40 minutes. What can you put your finger on, if anything, to, to try to explain why that happens on a fairly regular basis? I think if you look at defensively, our interior depth took a, took a big hit this year. And uh, 
you got to have those bodies inside to be able to play, especially in our league. And um, losing Joe takes one really older, bigger player and uh, puts young guys on the floor, you know, in and out of position. I think our interior depth through the course of the season, being able to keep fresh bodies in there defensively <clears throat> and on the glass, you know, at times was a problem. I think offensively, it really comes down at the end of the day to shooting the basketball. You know, this is a this is a game that's kind of simple when it goes in the in the basket. And um, I think our inconsistencies from shooting it from from outside throughout the course of the season, you know, quality consistency, you know, in perimeter scoring throughout the course of the year, where it's not as erratic. You know, some games it's really good. Other games, you know, it, it hits and misses. Um, but I would say, you know, the bottom line from a consistency standpoint is you got to be able to shoot the ball consistently at a high clip from a lot of different guys. And I think defensively, just our overall depth and age and size, you know, over the course of the season in this league, um, you know, to me was a big factor defensively in, in being able to sustain that effort, sustain that rebounding, that size in and around the basket, um, keeping older players on the floor at times. So I think. Those two things stand out, just shooting the ball, you know, erratic shooting numbers throughout the course of the year from the perimeter. And, you know, I think also defensively, just, you know, not being big enough and old enough and having that depth that you need in this league. All right. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Okay, I'm going to have Trace for three questions and then Armand for three. 